four exact loaves of each this morning. So, um, and you're welcome. If you can't see what I'm doing, please come up here. You know, there's, there's lots of space up here. We can get cozy. Did you have oil in that pan? Yeah, I just, I, I have a squirt bottle and I squirt oil in here so it doesn't stick. So, yeah, it helps out a lot. Do you use olive oil or? I use, I use olive oil and ciabatta. Um, but I just use regular vegetable oil in, in, for the, the pans. All right, so we, we do weigh out the dough um, carefully when we're 550 grams for the sourdough and uh, 375 grams for the, the um, baguettes. But today, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about keeping it even. I'm just going to try to even those up there. And I'll cut the baguette here. Do you use all bread flour in all your recipes? I use all purpose or, flour. Do you use AP? Mm -hmm. From Stafford County Mills, okay. which means it's going to be locally grown from Kansas, and, which is pretty easy to find. When you're from Kansas, it's all locally grown, really, because we grow a lot of it. Yeah, the unbleached, enriched. It's unbleached and it is enriched. You can't really get non. I was wondering how important it was at, as a home baker to use bread flour instead of AP flour. So, for artisan bread, you should use all purpose flour. But if it's like, I know like a brioche loaf or something with a lot of different additives, it needs more strength. I don't know. I would always use all purpose flour. But artisan bread usually calls for all purpose. So. so, Sharon, on the light side, do you have a nickname? Me personally? Uh huh. I, I just want to share a story with you. Okay. Uh, when you originally started, uh, you don't know this, so. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. not trying to embarrass her, but oh, no, no, it, it's really great. special to me. Um, for, oh gosh, the last five or six years, I take a group of my nieces and nephews trick or treating. Uh huh. And she lives in their, that neighborhood. Uh -huh. And so, when you were talking about the old garage as the bakery, <laughs> Those kids were so ecstatic after the first time they knocked on their door. And what did they get for trick or treating? A big old loaf of bread. <laughs> they were so, and so they still call you the bread lady, but she's not there. <laughs> so it is just ecstatic for me to meet you in person. And I'm going to share this story that I, because I tell them tons of stories all the time. But I'm going to say, I met the bread lady. <laughs> but you do have a nickname by my nieces awesome. and nephews. And I there's like five or six of them. And some are still like this, but some are getting like that. Nice. So I think the oldest one now is 13. So. Uh, they still enjoy the thought that they got loaves of bread, <laughs> and they fought over who got to try what. So it, it was quite the story for so us. So nice. Well, thank you for telling that. You're welcome. That's really sweet. I I did give out loaves. I'm on Main Street now, so I did that Main Street. Oh, um, well, they miss you in the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> I had oh, to nice shut off my nice costume here. Have a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was kind of scared that my house was going to get egged that night. <laughs> But you know, so many people don't want to give fresh products or bake things, but they were just like, it's bread. I said, it can't kill you. There's nothing in bread. Well, unless with a razor blade. Yeah. They were just so ecstatic, and they still talk about it. Awesome. So they do. Well, thank you. Yeah. When I was doing the, the deliveries, I did get called the bread lady a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to tell them you have a name now, so. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. So shaping, there's a very specific method for shaping. Like, and so all my employees, we all do it the exact same way. And it takes a lot of practice to shape and shape well. When I, I took classes at this, at San Francisco Baking Institute, and I, I felt like I was hot stuff, I was doing a good job, and I went up to my instructor and I was like, do I really need to do an internship? He kept on saying, you have to do an internship. You have to do an internship. And I was like, do I really need to do that? And he's like, yes, you do. You're not going to know how to shape until you've shaped thousands of loaves. Literally, thousands. And so I listened to him, and I got an internship at Madison Sourdough in Madison, Wisconsin. And I shaped thousands of loaves. And I still wasn't very good at it. 
<laughs> I really wasn't. I mean, my coworkers would shape, and their nose would look beautiful. And I, ever, I mean, I was shaping and shaping and shaping, and I still couldn't get it very well. And eventually, after you know, spending some time in my own bakery and really working at it, I, I feel like I've come a long ways, and it's a lot better. But it really, it's pretty amazing how good you can fast and efficient. And you just feel exactly what the dough needs. So shaping is all about um, tension and shape. So when I'm shaping this loaf, I'm going to build strength in the dough. And so when I'm shaping, I don't want to tear the outer, the outer layer because then it won't have strength anymore. That web, I don't want to break that nice web that I worked so hard to develop. So um, it's, you got to be gentle and you got to be firm. You just, you got to do it just right every time. <laughs> so I'm going to shape these sourdoughs first. And um, so there's a very specific method of how you do it. You go one, two from the top, and you stretch out these wings. You fold them over, so you've got a nice little box there. And what I did was I just I built some strength. Right, what this part is going to be in the very middle. And I built some strength there, right in the middle. And I put just a little bit more flour on the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roll it up and tap it down every single time. And at the very end, I'm going to put my finger, my thumb in there, and I'm just going to seal, seal off the very tippy tip. So I have just a little tiny lip there where I sealed it, but not much. And um, but I'm going to seal off the end. I always seal off the end very well. If you don't seal off the end, it kind of looks like a butthole. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to kind of pinch that I'm not telling the children about that. <laughs> that was my other joke. I know. So that's it for the jokes. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in flour. And I'm going to shape the rest of them. And then we'll enrobe those in flour. I'm kind of curious if anybody wants to try their hands at shaping a, a sourdough. Yes. 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 I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. All right, come on up here. Come, come watch me really closely. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more, and you'll watch me, and then we'll do those two together. Okay. All right. So, one, two, and you kind of tap it down, get any air bubbles out. Get a little more flour on there. Tap it down. Kind of. We're making a ditch there, so we have something, something to work with. And then you, you just, little by little, and then seal it off. Pretty good workout. Ready? <laughs> <laughs>